Namaste. My name is Kirti and on behalf of Himalayan Yoga Association, I welcome you all to this online teacher training course. I am a teacher here at Himalayan Yoga Association and I will be taking you through the concepts and details of the human body and yoga all together. Let's hope you enjoy this course. Let's start. Namaste and welcome back to the online yoga teacher training course. In today's video, we are going to discuss the Kundalini, all the hype that Kundalini is in the yoga world, how to awaken it, what is it about, what it does and why is it such a big deal when it comes to doing yoga. But before we go ahead and do that, I request you all to come and chant the Gayatri Mantra with me like we always do before the beginning of everything new. So come in any meditative posture, whether you're sitting on the floor on your mat or you're sitting on a chair. Adopt a mudra of your choice using your hands and place your hands on your knees. Close your eyes, roll your shoulders to the back, lengthen your spine and allow yourself to immerse in your breath continuously and effortlessly completely. Simply follow the pattern of your breath as you breathe in and breathe out. And while you're doing that, I request you all to observe the effect it leaves on your mind and your body. Just slowly, deeply and completely breathe using your nose and your lungs. Please use the maximum capacity of your lungs to breathe without stressing your body in any way. Now after a few breaths, slowly bring your hands in front of your chest in Namaskara Siddhi. Keep your eyes closed, touch the heart center with the back of your thumbs so that your spine stays active and your mind stays focused. If you know the mantra, you can chant it with me. Otherwise, you can always repeat it afterwards. Slowly breathe in. Now with me. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savetur Varenyam Bhargo Deva Syadhi Mahi Dhyo Yona Prachodayat Having absorbed the vibration and effect of the mantra, let's generate some energy between our hands by rubbing our palms against each other. Once you feel the energy between your hands, you can transfer this energy first to your eyes, cover your eyes with your palms, then massage your face, the back of your neck or Anywhere else you wish to transfer this energy to, please keep your eyes closed. Do not expose them to direct light right away. Once again, fold your palms, bow down to your fingertips and the universal truth. And with a few blinks, open your eyes and welcome back. So, a lot of times people have discussed, I'm sure all of you must have come across the term Kundalini in your life. Kundalini, um, it's, it's almost superficial, it's something that nobody has ever seen, yet everyone wants to experience. It's something of a fairy tale because it has been experienced in the past. A lot of people have experienced Kundalini in, in the present day as well, but maybe they are aware of it, maybe they are not aware of it. But one thing is for sure, that Kundalini is a life-changing experience because anyone who has somehow experienced the awakening of the Kundalini, I'm sure you would be able to bifurcate them from an average human being in itself. So what is this Kundalini in itself? How is it valid in the modern humanity? How and why are we discussing it over here? 
well we are discussing kundalini because kundalini is the purpose because of which you are doing all of these yogic things if we talk about the eight limbs of yoga each and every limb has an effect on the kundalini and ultimately all of them one way or the other work towards awakening and lifting up this energy inside your body kundalini should not be a uh, mistake for average or normal other energy that you consume through food in the form of nutrients it should not be considered with the energy of air water electricity it is something which is lying dormant inside your body in other words it is something which is sleeping inside your body and it needs to be awakened kundalini can also be considered the gateway through which a normal and average human being can transform into a superhuman being can transform into a limitless human being kundalini in itself is the goal of yoga i can it's the simplest way to explain it that kundalini awakening of the kundalini is related to everything that takes place inside of the human body whether or not modern modern science can prove it or not if you pay attention over here in the diagram then you'll come across a few terms a few random lines going through upwards and downwards and what are they first of all you'll see that there are seven chakras inside the human body i haven't named each and every one of those chakras because we are going to discuss them in the upcoming video in this video we are just going to talk about the kundalini and how can it be awakened how can it be affected if i have to give you a very short overview of how you can awaken the kundalini is that everything in yoga all the eight limbs of yoga whether it's yamas niyamas asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi all of them one way or the other the first seven limbs of yoga are all about awakening the kundalini they leave an effect on the awakening on the serpent energy that lies dormant inside your body kundalini is present inside all of us human beings but because of our modern lifestyle because of our unconscious uh, effect of of the mind that we have been programmed into from our childhood we obviously are ignorant of this whole energy as a whole because as superficial human beings we only consider the possibility of being born um you know going into a teenage getting education getting into a materialistic lifestyle getting married being retired getting old and at the end dying we never consider what really satisfies our soul by looking at here you can see that there is a small triangle placed in the bottom part of the body this part of the body is called as the perineum now perineum is the space between the anal sphincter of a human being and the genitals of a human being that blank space which lies between the anal sphincter and the genitals is called the perineum region and it is considered the source of all the energy that comes from within you so this is also more or less the place where the muladhara chakra is you must have heard about one of the um, niyamas of the eight limbs of yoga as brahmacharya which translates into celibacy another reason to maintain celibacy is because celibacy is uh, a vital and important for human beings to work on their kundalini as the sperm the energy that lies inside the human body that gets released in the act of sexual interactions with the opposite gender or by themselves as well this whole sperm this energy this it's called as virya in hindi in sanskrit it's referred to as virya now this virya is considered as the source of all energy this virya if it stays inside the body it obviously creates a lot of energy inside the body and this virya is what gives a rise and a boost to the kundalini that sleeps inside as it moves upwards there are basically three different nadis inside the human body one of them is 
Ida. One of them is Pingla and the third one is Sushmana. Now Ida and Pingla Nadis, also known as the right and the left, the masculine and the feminine, the sun and the moon energy of a human being because all human beings according to yogic science, every human being has both the genders inside of them. Whether they are masculine, whether they are feminine, whether they are a man, whether they are a woman, each one of us human beings have both of these characteristics, both of these energies inside of them. And that is why in mythologies as well, Shiva is considered incomplete without Shakti, that is his partner. And if you look from a human perspective, then it is depicted as Shiva as a masculine person who is a separate human being or a separate entity. And Shakti, his partner, his wife is considered as a feminine character who is uh, somehow inseparable from Shiva because they have mated for life. But in reality, if you go by scientific, yogic scientific methods, then you'll realize that each one of us human beings have both of these characteristics inside of them. Just how there are two sides of a coin, similarly there are two different aspects of a human being. The right side of a human being is considered as the masculine side of that character. The left side of the human being is considered as the feminine side of that character. The right side of the human being, whether or not they are men or women, they are that is considered as the sun side of their uh, you know, entity. The left side of the human being, whether they are masculine or feminine, it's considered as the moon side of their characteristics. The right side, just like how the sun is depicted as a source of energy, extrovertism, exaggeration, aggression, um, heat, power, is all of these are the characteristics of the sun and all of these are the characteristics of a human being as well. On the same lines, the left side of the, of the human being, which is the moon side, depicts the introverted characteristics, the thinking mind, the concentration, the resting, the sleep, all of the introverted, the feminine, the calming aspect of a human being are considered as the left side or the moon side of the human being itself. Now, even though some human beings, they obviously are very aggressive, they may be masculine in nature, they may be very outgoing, that just depicts that there is an imbalance between the masculine and the feminine side of that human being. An ideal sattvic human being who is very yogic in nature is not going to be over uh, aggressive, but at the same time he is not going to be over feminine in nature as well. A balanced human being would depict someone who has a balance in the left and the right side of the body, in the right brain and the left side of the brain. I'm sure you must have heard how the right side of the brain is having a different characteristics against the left side of the brain. One side is creative, the other side is logistic, analytical in nature. A balanced human being would have the goodness of both of these sides active without being biased to one particular characteristic. According to yoga science, the right nostril is considered as the sun side or the gateway through which you can work on stimulating the right side of the body just because it's there on the according to the right nostril. According to yoga science, the left nostril helps you stimulate the female characteristic or the moon characteristic of the human being. If you breathe through both of these nostrils, then you are stimulating both of them at the same time, also creating a balance in the meantime. For instance, there is the alternate breathing nostril, uh, alternate breathing pranayam which is Nadi Shodhan or Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Here, there is no bifurcation. You inhale from one side and exhale from the other nostril and then inhale from the other side and exhale from the other nostril. This is considered as one of the best techniques through which you can balance both of these nostrils. The right side of the human, nostril, of the human body, the right nostril, is basically the gateway to 
the pingla nadi the pingla being the sun side of the human being is considered as the heating aspect of the human being the left side of breathing from the left nostril is considered as stimulating the feminine or the moon characteristic of a human being once both of these energies they have been balanced and they have been constantly repetitively rhythmically stimulated only then will it awaken the third important nadi which is the sushumna nadi also known as kundalini according to yoga kundalini is also a yogic name of course but the original the ideal names for these three different nadis are sushumna ida and pingla ida being the left side the female the cooling side the feminine side and pingla being the right side the masculine the heating and the sun side of the human being once both of these the moon and the sun have been balanced inside the human being only then will the kundalini rise upwards which is lying dormant at the base of the spine which is the perineum region the perineum is the space where the tailbone the spine ends and the limbs obviously they start bifurcated from that area they start separating this they become as the um, instruments through which you interact with the world now if you'll pay attention over here then you'll see that both of these all of these nostrils one way or the other they all intersect the different chakras that cross upwards towards the top of the head the base of the spine the perineum region is where the muladhara chakra is also the first chakra in itself and on the top of the head you have the sahasra chakra also known as the crown chakra which means by the time the kundalini reaches upwards you have attained the maximum potential and benefits of the kundalini um now what is it that you can do to stimulate the sushumna the kundalini inside the human body first of all before we go ahead and do that i need you to understand why you should awaken the kundalini why you should think or why you should work towards awakening the kundalini in the first place first of all to create a balance inside the human existence that you are you need to awaken the kundalini awakening of the kundalini would also mean that you have overcome or crossed the hurdles of human existence as it is and you have spiritually lifted yourself to a higher consciousness which thinks or which completely is in sync with the soul in itself once the kundalini is awakened then ego is completely diminished you are away from all of these things which tie you down to this materialistic world and you realize that there is so much more to life than just possessing things or just achieving things if you have to work towards achieving things then work towards your own personal growth and this is exactly what kundalini is all about try and understand this all of us organisms living inside this planet one way or the other we are all born and apply the same principles as everyone else we all need to breathe oxygen we all need to drink water we all need to eat food we all need to sleep only human beings have lifted themselves from other organisms on this planet on the mother earth just because they have completely unraveled the potential of the kundalini call it a gift or a boom in itself but it is what helps us stay on top of the food chain if you want to think it that way or it keeps us as active as efficient as an organism as compared to any other organism found on this planet it is the awakening of the kundalini that you can finally break this whole cycle of rebirths if you are uh, if you have to go into the details of what can the kundalini awakening do inside your body then think about all of the noble citizens that you may have come across all the great examples in the society even though they may or may not have their kundalini's awakened i do not know whether they have even experienced it but in my head i imagine that kundalini awakening will completely 
remove the I word from your existence and merge it down with the Atman, the soul. Someone who's able to see the goodness in others, someone who's able to feel the goodness in others, someone who is unbiased, someone who does not discriminate, someone who is an ever-loving, every all-affectionate human being, someone who is completely blissful and peaceful no matter what life throws at him. If this is not a reason enough, because at the end of the day, we are working towards becoming happier. We possess things so that they can give us some temporary happiness. We try to get richer thinking that we will become happier if we have more money to spend. We try to get fitter thinking that if we are more muscular, if we are much more fitter, then we will be more confident, more happier. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal that the human being has adopted is happiness and Kundalini awakening, awakening of all of these things, all of these chakras is something which is only going to give you happiness and nothing else. Unbiased, undisturbed, eternal happiness at the end of the day is the ultimate goal of Kundalini. Eventually, breathing from both of these nostrils is a way to stimulate the Sushmana Nadi. Cleansing of the mind, the which, is, which talks about the yamas of the eight limbs of yoga, starts working on the mind in itself. So it brings about a mental change. Then cleansing of the body and cleansing of other things around you works on another mental change inside of you. Asanas, stretching of these asanas one way or the other, they are going to help you awaken the kundalini um, because they are going to stimulate different chakras, different all of these different twists, different stretches that you give to your body in the name of asanas, they are stimulating your different chakras in your body. You must have heard how someone who has really good balance in place of back bending or forward bending, they at the end of the day have an imbalance or a completely balanced Swadishthana Chakra. That's because most of the back bending happens around the Swadishthana Chakra of the spine, wherever the location of the Swadishthana Chakra on the spine is. All of these chakras, they are located on the spinal vertebrae of the human being and depending on which part of the body you are twisting, you are stretching, all of these chakras, they get a certain stimulation, a certain balance. If you overdo them, of course, they can even imbalance and all of these chakras, they have a different role to play in your own personal, mental and physical existence. Eventually, as the sleeping energy which is lying dormant in the peridium region is getting stimulated, it will give rise to the kundalini energy which will start moving upwards, intersecting the different chakras located in the human body and as it crosses, it will reach the third eye and out of your body with the help of the crown chakra or the sahasra chakra. You will see that this whole energy, the kundalini which sets free from the top of the human body means that the human being has attained the ultimate and the human being has reached the higher conscious, the higher superhumanity in itself. There are a lot other details related to the kundalini. I need you to go ahead and research on it yourself. At the same time, I this is one good exercise for you to experience different kundalini uh, tactics in your own life. According to, since if you remember the time when you started doing yoga yourself, uh, I need you to think about the different changes that came across in your mind and your body as you started doing yoga. What made you go further in your own yogic journey, whether it's just asanas, whether it's pranayama, whether it's meditation. There, each and everything leaves an effect on the different chakras, the different nadis that we have inside the human body, as well as it stimulates and awakens the serpent energy called the Kundalini. And at the same time, where would you like to go is something that you would like to think about. With your own personal yogic journey, if you haven't asked this question yet, today would be a good day to ask yourself, where would you like to take your own personal yogic journey 
and if the gold is kundalini then you should never be disturbing this whole process or this whole journey itself i hope you found today's video informative i will come again next time until then thank you and namaste